Morning folks, Monday, welcome to the vlog. Start of another week and start of a whole bunch of new problems that we're gonna have to tackle this week. So I was kinda hoping to get the brew stand finished off. Um, I've discovered a new technique as well for giving the stainless steel a brushed finish look, which is lubrication and sandpaper, oil and sandpaper. Seems to work, I've tested it on that area. Gets rid of all the weld stains and everything like that. But we'll save that for a brew stand vlog. What we've got to do today is troubleshoot this bad boy. So here is the compressor that we've had in the, in the, uh, the beer cellar. It did start off as my compressor in the workshop, but now it's actually, we've been using it for driving the gas pumps in the beer cellar. And uh, it's given up the ghost, unfortunately. Although I've just seen, <laughs> I've just seen a button popped out on there, which is an overheat protection button. And I've just pushed it back in. I wonder if it'll fire up straight away. But yeah, Stuart rang me um, on Saturday, I think it was, and said the compressor's packed up. So I said, I'll tell you what then, I will uh, bring it into the unit, troubleshoot it. We've got a small 25 litre tank one, so we just put that in there in the meantime. But it's not good enough for the cellar because the duty cycle's not high enough on it. Anyway, while I've got this out, it would make sense for me to give it a quick once over, maybe change the oil in it and uh, make sure it's fully drained and everything else and then put it back into the cellar if I can get it working again. I hope so because they're good tanks these are and they're quite expensive. So I pulled her in, plugged her in and uh, turned her on. She fired up but she's not well. There was a big spark came out of the motor housing. That's telling me that something's not right with the motor. Not sure what it is, but it gave a loud pop. And also you can tell that it's not happy because it's not building up any speed. So I'll just give you a quick experiment, but it might make me jump. You can see that doesn't sound right and it doesn't smell right. I can smell a lot of burning, so I think that the culprit is this motor here. So, looks like we're gonna have to dismount the motor and maybe change it out for a new one. We shall see. This isn't gonna be an easy fix. So I've gone ahead, I've gone ahead and taken the main cover off the back here to give us access to the drive pulleys and there's the usual you know sort and rubber and whatnot on the on the side of the tank what did worry me a little bit was I did find some oil but I've checked the oil level and it looks pretty high although it's a little bit grey so I think we'll go ahead and change the oil provided I can repair the system. So, to eliminate the uh, compressor itself, we're going to try and power up the motor on its own without it having to drive this. But that's very little resistance there. I don't know why it's making a farty noise. We'll see, we'll see, anyway. So now I've got a cover off. This should rotate <coughs> relatively fast under no load. So if I could find the, uh, the speed on it, I'd be able to measure it with a, uh, what do you call it, tachometer. That's provided that it runs, but I, I do think it's the motor, so let's give that a whirl. Right, well the motor ran, but like I say, it's under no load, so uh, it didn't look like it was running very fast either. 
So I think I'm going to see if I can get the motor speed from somewhere and then measure measure it with a tachometer to see if we are actually doing what we're meant to be doing. It smells though and the giveaway for me is we've got all this kind of electrical smokiness all coming out the motor here which is kind of telling me that something's not happy on the inside of that so we are yet to continue with the exploration before we narrow down exactly what's caused the failure on this thing but I'm hoping that it isn't the cylinder head you might need to order some new valves for it, I don't know we're going to continue to explore well folks I think we may have found uh, the problem if not at least a symptom I'm thinking this is the problem though the capacitor has just gone and clean blown its arse end off that would have been the explosion the big pop and uh, it's split all the way down its side as you can see so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull that bad boy out see if we can take a reading off it and hopefully we'll be able to get an identical capacitor pretty quickly to put in place but if that's the case and uh, we change the cap out and it still runs nicely then bingo bango problem solved folks but I'm still gonna go ahead and change the oil anyway while I'm here I think upon my little shelf of tricks we've got some compressor oil that we can just change her out with okay so we've got the capacitor out on the table there and in order to read the uh, the stuff on the side of it I've taken a photo here on the old smartphone and the best way to read anything on something so dimly illuminated is by blowing it up on your phone so I'm hoping you can see this it's probably quite difficult actually maybe if I do that you'll be able to make it out a little bit better so as you can see it's got a 35 there and a big 35 there so this is a 35 microfarad capacitor that UF there look microfarad uh, for AC 450 400 volts not sure what the B and the C mean but uh, we're gonna go online we're gonna go and see if we, that's probably the Hertz 5060 BC we'll see anyway we're gonna go online and see if we can order another one of these but uh, yeah she's gone well and truly kaput so I think this capacitor it is no more but what we'll do is just a little cheeky uh, test here with the meter to see if indeed there's any capacitance where can I put this where well, you can see it see if there's any capacitance remaining in the old uh, gal so let's go on to farads and there we go it's reading open lead so we should find continuity on these two leads and these two leads but not across which we don't and then we'll put it on farads and as you can see she's well and truly fried folks we're getting nothing out of her so she's blown to smithereens let's hope though that that is the cause of the problem and not a symptom of something further on down the chain of command if you like for the compressor so there is of course a possibility that something inside the motor's gone although there isn't a lot to go or that there's something gone in the uh, bell housing itself in the crankcase we shall see but the fact that this rotates really easily until it hits compression you hear that? Sander telling me that uh, that's fine anyway let's go and find a capacitor 
So I thought I'd bring you in guys uh, for the oil change because I've ordered a new capacitor on the Tinter webs and fantastically it only cost £3.89 plus P&P which was about two ninety nine. So fingers crossed we should get this machine up and running again for less than a tenner. So what I'm going to do now is actually change the oil so this is just a jerry rigged uh, hot oil what did you call it waterfall bloody hell lad talk about thinking out loud so let's have a look Oh, first time's a charm. So I've just made this uh, little oil waterfall, eh, if you like, to run the oil out of the drain plug and into, well, whatever I've got. It's a Gin Mare bottle, so that'll do. And uh, before we take that little uh, Allen key bolt out, I'm just going to undo the oil inlet to allow some air into the system because obviously we don't want to create an airlock as the oil is coming out so this looks to me like it's slightly overfilled so what I'm going to do when I've finally got this plug out which seems to have a rather long thread on it for some reason come on lad there we go Right, so we've got that bad boy out, just give that a clean up, make sure nothing's going to fall into the hole. And now we're just going to crack open the drain plug on the sump. There we go. So if I just do it this way, we may lose a little bit of oil initially onto the table but I'm hoping I'm gonna be quick enough to catch the majority of it how do you like them apples oh look at that so you can see we're collecting a fair amount of compressor oil here we're about 500 mil in and the flow does seem to be slowing down a little bit the trouble is I can't put this bottle down I'm gonna to have to stand and hold it Right then, so that's empty, or as empty as it's going to be, so we're going to just pop that drain plug back in here, there we go, sunshine, so we have spilt a little bit of oil when I pulled that piece of cardboard away, but never ye mind lad, we'll be alright, just see if we can mop most of it up, with a bit of tip shoe, I think that looks nice and clean. Give it all the rub down. A bit on the table. And then that is what we've got basically uh, 700 millilitres. And like I said, it was actually overfilled. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and make some type of funnel here and we're going to go and pour it in until the sight glass is half full. Oh 
I wonder, he says, curiously. I should have a funnel somewhere really, shouldn't I? But I just can't seem to find one, so I think we're just gonna have to play it by ear, folks, and wing it. Right, let's go for it. Just a little test pour, make sure it's all going in the right direction. Looks like it. Oh, I can see it leaking out the sides. Can't be going in the right direction then. Okay. This is what happens when you're a cheap bastard. Like me. Right, that's uh, about 250mm gone in. I hope it's gone in anyway and not down the side. So we'll just leave that for a second to, to soak in. And then we'll come back and see if we can't see any indication on the front of the uh, sight glass. Just let it run in and settle down first. And there we go. I hope you can see just on the sight glass there, the level is just halfway. And that is more than enough oil for this compressor. So that was too much, basically. So what we've put in now is around 500 milliliters. So I'll now transfer all that spent oil out of this Jim Mare bottle into this oil bottle. And then when Stuart goes up to the recycling center in Redford, the tip, you can take this with him and dispose of it properly. And uh, we just have to wait now. We just have to wait now for the delivery of the capacitor. And once that capacitor arrives, then we should be able to get this bad boy back in action and back into the beer cellar where it can continue to serve many, many pints of fantastic beer to our patrons in Retford. Anyway, we're going to do a little bit of work on the brew stand. I don't think I'm going to entitle this video brew stand build because all I'm doing really is uh, just making good most of what we've already done. I have gone ahead and uh, mounted the little brackets, the little blue uh, toggle clamp should I say onto the brackets so they retain the pots in position and also I've just cut this piece of steel and welded a cap on the end because that's going to stand in this corner here and that's going to hold the control panel once it's finished so I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up then once I've welded this onto the panel itself then we're going to go ahead with some sandpaper and some WD-40 and we're going to put a brush steel finish on all of the surfaces and then all that remains then is for us to mount the control panel and wire it up and we can do that on a dedicated video but I've got lots of little jobs to do today so I thought this would slot nicely into a vlog it would be much easier for the people who are trying to follow the build and not so much watch the vlogs anyway that's what's happening so all I need to do now is just put my uh, protective helmet on and then what we're going to do is clean up the finish on this edge here just with the flapper wheel Just as good, simple as that, and that's a good, good shiny finish for the end of the uh, end of the cap there. Then obviously when we brush it later on, we'll get that all to match. We're going for a brushed finish on this, not a mirror finish. It's easier to achieve, and of course, 
when it invariably gets scratched up, it's not going to be a big issue for me. Right, and then this itself, this section itself, is going to be holding a TV bracket from which we will be mounting the control panel. So I'll just go and get that and we'll have a look. So here is the TV bracket. It's from Screwfix. Might be able to show you the box. Here we go. So it's the full motion TV wall mount. 32 to 47 inch, 27.2 kilogram weight capacity. That should be more than enough for the control panel. And then the idea is we're going to mount this on here like that by welding some stainless steel studs on there and then we'll weld the whole thing to the um, brew stand like that so I'm going to go ahead and get a few of these 316 oh no they're A2 stainless um, machine screws I think I've got them in this wonderful drawer here there we go M8 machine screws so they they should do the job just like that one two three and that should be enough to hold the said bracket on like that at least I hope anyway that's my intentions there we go. so here we have it folks this is the uh, control panel arm almost ready for assembly I've just screwed the back panel onto the control panel uh, one drawback is I think that this particular control panel is too big. So I've ordered a smaller one, 400 square. I did want like this one, the 600 by 400, but the problem with it is I wanted it the other way around. That kind of mounted. Um, vertically instead of horizontally but unfortunately we couldn't get that so we're stuck we're stuck with this orientation or a smaller panel but either way it's good to know that this one fits anyway if I have to go ahead and use it so that will be kind of the panel tucked away not in use give you a bit of an idea of the whole system there so let's go ahead and stick the pots on oh my goodness they do weigh a little bit oh. right let's pop them on he's in This little fella on. There we go. He's in. That's looking good. Just adjust the camera slightly. There we go. And then, of course, we'll have the HLT on here. Like so. And then, when it's ready to fire up the brew stand of course for a brew day all we need to do is pull out the control panel and we're, we're ready to brew it does look pretty mean though doesn't it with the old <laughs> control panel there what do you think to that folks that's not bad at all but you can see by the width you see what I mean by not quite what I'm after? 
if I could mount it vertically that would be fine but the door opens that way so of course it'd either drop all the way down or I'd have to lift it up above my head to get in and wire it so not ideal really but yeah that's uh, that's that right so I've been upstairs and I fetched the uh, the recipes down for the next three brew days which are gonna happen tomorrow Wednesday and Thursday so I've weighed the grain out there's the vacant for Thursday proof of concept for Wednesday and then in the mash tun we've got all the grain weighed out for a batch of Harrison's pear. So what I'm gonna do, go and do now is join this youth up in the pub for one of those beautiful looking golden ales. So we'll see you tomorrow. Womp. Womp, womp. <laughs>